Today, I'm joined by Professor Robin Shattuck, who's at the Faculty of Medicine, Department of Infectious Disease, Chair in Mucosal uh, Infection and Immunology at Imperial College London. Thanks, Robin, so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. I'm really happy to talk to you today. Great. Well, I'm going to get right into what everybody wants to hear about, and that is that you and your colleagues are conducting a trial, a um, clinical trial for a vaccine against um, coronavirus. Can you tell us something about that clinical trial? Yeah, so we um, are developing what we call a self-amplifying RNA vaccine. Um, and we went from downloading the sequence of the virus that the Chinese scientists published online to developing a prototype vaccine in, within three weeks and started testing it in animal models. Um, we've seen so far in small animals that it induces very high levels of neutralizing antibodies and that's what we think will be prevent, you know, will prevent infection with this new coronavirus. Um, and we're now in the manufacturing phase of making the vaccine and uh, undertaking the preclinical toxicology that's required for us to move into human studies. And we hope to start those in June of this year. Oh, that's so fast. How many people are you going to enroll into your study? So in the first study, it's around 250 people. Um, we hope that if that's successful and it shows the right immune response and no safety signals that we'd be concerned about, that we may be able to then move very rapidly to a large efficacy trial. Um, we're targeting about 5,000 people, um, hopefully this coming winter. Okay, wow. I mean, that's a lot of people. I wonder, um, how are you going to know whether those people have already been infected and have cleared the infection and maybe they already have immunity? So how can you tell whether your vaccine is working? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. And of course, uh, what we're doing is setting up a, a, a number of serological assays to be able to distinguish between a vaccine-induced response and an infection-related uh, response. So we will be able to pick people up who become infected. Um, and we will also potentially uh, immunize people who've previously seen the virus to see if that boosts their response as well. Um, but that's a really active area um, that we and many other people are working on really fast to, to tie down. Yeah, uh, that's really interesting, um, vaccine, uh, vaccinating people who've already been infected. But now you did mention that you're using an mRNA vaccine. Um, I think um, people might not realize necessarily that there's any number of different designs for a vaccine. Uh, you know, it's not just one kind of product that would fit every kind of disease that we could have. Why did you guys choose to do an RNA vaccine? We chose it for a couple of reasons, and, and actually we have a special version of an RNA vaccine. So um, partly because it's can be produced by a fully synthetic process. So instead of growing a virus in cells in, in you know, thousands of liters of material, we can make a million doses in a one liter volume. So that's a really big benefit. Um, the type of RNA we've chosen actually can copy itself. So you inject it into the muscle, the muscle takes up the RNA, and once it's in the cell, it amplifies the number of copies within that cell. And so you get a burst of expression of the protein. Now, we've targeted that spike on the surface of the virus. So when you see those pictures of the coronavirus, it has that corona of spikes. So we're really hijacking the cells to make just the spike, not the whole virus, so it's not infectious, we're just making the spike. Um, and then the immune system mounts a, a response to that. Um, so if you like, it's like a, a mock infection. Um, it's not a real infection and it prepares the, the uh, individual so that when they see the real virus, they're immune. I think that's a really clever design though too. You can, you can put from the way I'm understanding it, a fairly small dose in there, but you're actually turning the person's body into a factory to make it be a higher dose and, and then the immune system can uh, make the immune response. Absolutely. You've stole, stolen words out of my mouth. What we often say is instead of having a massive factory to make it, you're, you're giving the muscles the instruction for them to make the vaccine themselves. Very uh, clever. And the dose issue is really important because we're using a one microgram dose. That's a very, very tiny dose. But that means, again, in terms of scale, 
That's why we can get a million doses out of a liter of uh, reaction material. Uh, it sounds like you guys have um, really approached uh, this idea of designing a vaccine from a number of clever angles. And one thing that I was really impressed with that you started telling us about was this incredibly fast timeline for uh, making a vaccine. You know, we're hearing that, and vaccines really do take quite a while to develop, um, you know, relative to a treatment, but you are really speeding up this, this timeline by the sounds of things. How do you think you, your, your design compares to a traditional vaccine development? So we've definitely done it much faster than traditional vaccine development, and that's because we're using essentially synthetic biology. So you know, we the design itself is done on a computer. You know, we we get the the parts made synthetically. We stitch them together using molecular biology. That's a really fast process, and you know, conventional vaccines may take months to go and start growing up virus or making recombinant proteins. So we've kind of condensed something that typically in vaccine development might be a three to 10 year process to a, a kind of three month process. Oh, that's so that's incredible. But what's frustrating is we still have to do the clinical uh, part um, in an appropriate fashion. We can't speed that up because Safety is really important. And the last thing we want to do is rush a vaccine out there, even though everybody wants one, but uh, make things worse. So, you know, we're often asked, why aren't we doing it faster? Um, and, and that's because we just need to make sure it's, it's really safe. Yeah, I mean, for sure. There are, there are reasons you could imagine that, you know, maybe a vaccine might make the situation worse. Obviously, we're hoping it will make the situation a lot better. Um, now, I have known you for quite a long time, and the way I know you, you're, a, you're an HIV researcher. You've been involved in a lot of different um, technologies to try to come up with a way that we could prevent HIV vaccine, microbicide, other methods. So how do you think the lessons you've learned in your HIV research have really helped you, you know, come to, come to this virus with, with, you know, just incredible speed and precision? I mean, the... the platform approach that we're using came out of our HIV research in the first place because HIV is, you know, I often say it's, it's one of the biggest challenges of a generation to make a vaccine um, and we need to test a lot of new vaccine targets in humans. And so we were looking for a system that was cost effective to do a lot of early clinical testing. And that's why we started working on this platform itself. Um, we hadn't got it to the clinic. Um, because it was taking time and also we needed to raise the money. Um, but it meant we were well positioned to respond to this epidemic. Um, I think what we'll learn from this epidemic is um, how to use this tool. And that will definitely feed back into our HIV research. I'm, I'm absolutely certain that, that when we get back to you know, working on our other targets, we'll be using this technology to its full extent and we'll have learned a lot of lessons here. Oh, that's a kind of a great idea. I mean, certainly we're hearing about how HIV has helped people respond to coronavirus, but it's, it's interesting to think about how coronavirus is going to help us get back to HIV when, when the time comes for that. Yeah, I think it'll make a big difference. Yeah, Robin, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Really appreciate these explanations. I know everyone's excited for a vaccine. We wish you and your group all the best. My pleasure. Thank you very much.